Um, I called this press conference today uh, to talk about a new challenge that I will be uh, faced with. Uh, it's a personal one, one that will require me to once again uh, be an underdog and a fighter, which is something I think I'm known for. Uh, a few days ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it's uh, an aggressive B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, to be specific. And uh, it's a cancer of the lymph nodes. The truth is that um, I've learned over the past few days that this cancer is very advanced and very aggressive. Um, when I embarked on our trade mission a few weeks ago, uh, when we went to Asia, I had no idea of my condition. I've learned a heck of a lot more in the past 10 days or so. Uh, much has happened over a very short period of time that has led me to seek medical attention uh, and has brought me here to talk with you today. I'm going to face this challenge with the same energy and determination uh, that I've relied on to climb every hill and over, ev overcome every obstacle that I've faced in my life. I'm blessed with uh, the uh, incredible expertise and dedication of an unbelievable healthcare team that I've just come to know, actually. Um, I can already tell they're going to be great. Um, these healthcare experts are going to be helping me on my journey from diagnosis to treatment and then to recovery. The good news is um, that I've learned that although this cancer I have is a very aggressive one and it's spread very rapidly, um, it's also one that is, responds very aggressively to chemotherapy treatment um, and that um, there's a very strong chance of success. Not only a strong chance of survival, but a strong chance of beating it all together uh, and getting rid of the cancer. Um, the best news is that my odds of uh, getting through this and beating this are much, much better uh, than the odds I had of beating Anthony Brown <laughs> to become the 62nd governor of Maryland. <laughs> Uh, the odds uh, are uh, better than finally doing away with the rain tax mandate. <laughs> the odds are better than uh, delivering tax relief for the families of Maryland. Uh, better than the odds of passing a budget that doesn't include tax hikes and reins in state spending. Uh, better than the odds of negotiating enhanced PMT regulations with both the agricultural community and the environmental community to help save our bay. Uh, better than the odds of reducing tolls for the first time in 50 years, and uh, definitely better than the odds of actually having the Baltimore Sun name me as Marylander of the Year. <laughs> um, this latest challenge will require my attention and focus while balancing the demands uh, of being the best public servant that I can be. Fortunately, I'm blessed with uh, an incredible family, a loving spouse along with three wonderful daughters and a strong extended family and an incredible number of devoted friends. I'm also fortunate to have um, a good friend and a wise and steady partner in government, that's Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford and a great chief of staff in Craig Williams, and uh, what I think is the best cabinet and the best governor's staff in the history of the state of Maryland. And we've got all of them to back us up and help make sure we're keeping things running here uh, at work when I'm uh, tied up with some treatment. Um, so cancer, regardless of what type it is, is a disease that has touched every one of us in this room, uh, through family or friends or loved ones. It's my hope that being candid and transparent about my battle will um, 
that I'll be able to help raise awareness that could ultimately benefit others. This weekend, like the rest of Maryland, uh, my family celebrated Father's Day. For me, even though I had some really tough news to deliver to them, uh, it was a special and heartfelt time uh, to be with family, with the First Lady, our daughters, and with my dad, Larry Hogan Sr., my role model. In the midst of this struggle, I was reminded once again of how truly blessed and how truly lucky I am. As I uh, climb this hill, I remain comforted by my abiding faith that the Lord continues to bless me and will be by my side with every step, granting me the strength to defeat this disease and the wisdom and the judgment to be the public servant, public, public steward that I was elected to be. Over the coming months, I'll be receiving uh, multiple very aggressive chemotherapy treatments. Uh, most likely, I'm going to lose my hair. You won't have these beautiful gray locks. <laughs> um, I may trim down a little bit. Uh, but I won't stop working to change Maryland for the better. I'll be working hard and making the decisions that the people of this state elected me to make. The fact is that I'm just like the more than 70,000 people diagnosed with lymphoma every single year who fight it, beat it, and continue doing their jobs at the same time. With my faith, my family, and my friends, I know that uh, I won't just beat this disease, but that I'll be a better and stronger person and governor when we get to the other side of it. So I thank you for being here, and I'd be happy to answer anybody's questions. Governor Challing Reagan here. Are your doctors Republicans? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, and I asked the same question the other day, joking. <laughs> You know, this has all come, come up pretty quickly, and uh, just uh, last week, I, uh, you know, it was a shocking news to me, but I had gotten these MRIs that showed this cancer kind of spread throughout my body. I had three different doctors who I just met for the first time that day, and they spent a couple of hours with me, and I said that, said that to them, and the guy said, we're all huge fans, Governor. <laughs> we think you're doing a great job. They wouldn't tell me if they're Republicans or Democrats, but they did say they were supporters anyway. But I, I, that doesn't really matter to me. I just know I'm trying to get the best help we can get. I've got a tremendous group of uh, the best, best professionals we can find, and they seem to have a good idea of a plan of attack, and we're going to aggressively go after it. How are you feeling now, Governor? How are you feeling? You know, I actually feel pretty good. Um, Although I've been, I've been having uh, procedures every day. You know, there was a, there was a uh, story in the Post on Saturday saying I was under the weather and not feeling well, and they thought maybe I caught a bug on my trip. Actually, I've been feeling fine. Um, and I did about half of my schedule over the past two weeks, but I missed things because they were sending me for required things. I had to go do a CAT scan, a PET scan, a MRI. I had a, uh, a minor surgery last week, they did a biopsy and removed a lymph node from under my arm, so they had to put me to sleep, and it was, you know, it wasn't a big deal, but um, today I had a, a bone marrow uh, thing where they actually stuck a 12-inch thing into my hip and cored out some uh, bone marrow, so that hurt a little bit, <laughs> and uh, I'm actually taking some painkillers, and the doctor said, I wouldn't advise you to make any serious decisions. <laughs> Or I think you will just rest up and stay home. And I go, well, I'm doing a press conference at 4 o'clock. And they go, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> but I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, uh, this, this stuff is, you know, it's kind of spread. I've got a lot of them in my abdomen. It's pressing up against my spinal column. It's difficult to eat because it's, I'm kind of full with, uh, but I'm not, I'm not terribly sick. Um, you know, I'm just, it's just something I've got to go after before it gets worse. Aware of this, 
Yeah. Yeah, well, it was very strange, and I think this is typical of this particular disease. It just sneaks up on you. You don't have a lot of symptoms ahead of time. Um, I'll tell you my story as succinctly as possible. Um, had no symptoms whatsoever. Felt great. We were on a trade mission. We did 50 or 60 meetings in three countries in 12 days. I mean, I was working 15 hours a day. Uh, we were on a 12-hour flight uh, with a 12-hour time difference, and people couldn't believe the energy I had. I didn't feel sick at all. Uh, but the day before we left, I was shaving, and I felt uh, a big lump in my neck. Didn't hurt at all. It's like a golf ball here. You can probably see it. And I was like, that's a very strange thing, some kind of a cyst or a bump or something. So I went to see my primary care physician when I got back. Uh, primary care physician sent me to get an ultrasound, who then sent me to an ENT guy, ear, nose, and throat doctor, who said, I want you to get some MRIs and some CAT scans, which they did. And then they found 12 more of these things in my neck and chest and said, we want to do a full MRI. They found 20 or 30 more in my core area and my groin area and you know it's just it was one test after another after another I, I this un, it was like peeling an onion it was, let's send you for this test oh that's bad let's send you for this test that doesn't look so good let's send you for this test it's even worse than we thought but I didn't really have any symptoms this only I had a I, sh I saw one thing pop out I had a little bit of pain in my back which I thought was like a pulled muscle it, it turns out it was a it was a tumor pressing up against my, or still is, <laughs> pressing up against my nerves, and that was causing the pain. But, it, you know, I still feel good. I got energy, and uh, other than I don't have much of an appetite, um, I got, I'm, I'm not tired, and I'm not in terrible pain. Dr., when was stage and how long will it take? And what stage and how long will it take? Um, on the stage, we're not quite sure yet. Um, some of the tests I did today, uh, will probably give us that answer, and um, and, and uh, by the way, I'm, I'm working with a team of doctors from Anne Arundel uh, Medical Center and Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland Medical System. I meet with another one tomorrow that's going to be a second or third opinion and review of all these tests that I've done. Um, it's at least very advanced stage three, um, if not stage four, and uh, we'll find out the details of that probably this week. Um, as far as the treatment, um, it's, uh, they want to be, I want to be, and they want to be as aggressive as possible. And because of the fast growing nature of this thing, we can't waste any time, we can't wait. So they want to immediately start chemotherapy treatment, and they want to go as aggressively as possible. So, as I understand it, they try to give you as much as you can possibly take without killing you. They want to kill the cancer and keep you alive. Uh, so, I, I believe the plan is they're going to put me in the hospital for four days, and, uh, shoot me with chemotherapy for 24 hours a day in intensive care, and then start a, uh, a six-round process where they, they zap you for a day, and then they, they let you rest up for a few weeks, and then they zap you again, and all together it's about an 18-week process. And uh, all of the experts tell me that they believe that um, I'll come out of that completely clear. Um, they also tell me it's gonna beat the hell out of me. So, you know, honestly, they say you're gonna go through hell and back again, but you're gonna love it when you get back, uh, and the results are gonna be good. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not gonna be an easy thing, and I'm gonna miss a few uh, Board of Public Works, and I'm gonna miss a few meetings, uh, but I'm still gonna be constantly involved. Uh, I mean, there's, there's probably two, three days every week, every month where, or every three weeks, that I'm not gonna be feeling so well, probably, and I'll just, I'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the rest of the time, I'll be working. Anybody else? Yeah. How will the lieutenant governor's role change? Well, the lieutenant governor, uh, the role has changed ever since uh, he's been elected lieutenant governor, and we keep piling more and more work on him. I think he's got more responsibility now than any lieutenant governor in history. But I think, uh, you know, he's, you know, Boyd has my back. There's no question about that. He's the most capable guy to ever serve as lieutenant governor. Um, he is going to step up and do even more, I guess. He's going to fill in more at the Board of Public Works. He's going to have to fill in for me on some other meetings, as will our entire cabinet. Um, they're going to step up and, and do more things and fill in when I can't be there. Um, if I am uh, in a situation where they put me to sleep, which they did last week, 
and uh, we, uh, you know, the, the lieutenant governor was ready and prepared to uh, sign documents and make decisions in, in, in the fa in, if I wasn't able to. Luckily, there was no major decision during that one hour I was asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> lieutenant governor <laughs> didn't, he didn't make any crazy uh, decisions, uh, but, but we ha he has my utmost confidence. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, um, it's a tough time to go through, and I'm going to miss a few meetings, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have every, every capacity to make decisions. I'll be at a lot of meetings. You'll still see me at events. Um, I'll be still working most of the time, and, you know, my residence across the street is uh, 100 yards away, and uh, I've been, what's been happening, even with my treatment in the past 10 days, they're shuffling piles of documents back and forth like every hour. I mean, I, there, I, I say to the state troopers, are you kidding me? Another pile of homework? Uh, so I'm making decisions and getting things done even when I'm not here. Um, but um, I, I don't see any reason why we're not going to keep, uh, look, <clears throat> I, some people would say, some people think I'm crazy the kind of hours I put in. You know, I'm, I'm a workaholic and people around here know it. We work people to, to, to death. We go seven days a week, 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day. You know, um, I, I, I would venture to say, some people have said we got more done in five months, which by the way, today is five months since I've been governor. We got quite a few things done. Um, yeah, I, I think even if I were to work half time, it would be twice as much as any other governor's work. No, I mean, they really um, they haven't given me any indication as to what, how it happened, when it started, or what contributed to it. But yeah, I mean, I, I didn't take a day off for a year and a half, so I mean, I'm sure stress and uh, hard work exacerbates problems, but it didn't cause the situation. It was, uh, this is something that just, it doesn't seem to have been around for a long time. It just hit me, you know, in a very short period of time. Yeah. I just wonder if you might want to offer some thoughts right now about the value of access to health care and almost might reflect on that larger debate in our country and in our state. Well, I mean, I, I, on the pain medications I'm on today, I'm probably not going to get into a detailed uh, debate about the entire health care system, but I mean, I, access to health care is critically important. Um, I'm lucky enough to have access to the best health care, and not everybody is, and it's, a, it's an issue that, uh, you know, we've got our great health secretary here with us today, and um, we're making tremendous progress, and it's uh, an issue we're still waiting to hear, you know, what happens nationwide with respect to health care and how we're going to provide it. But um, I would hate to be someone without access to health care, without access to insurance, to get the kind of news that I got last week. Last question. Is there another instance of another which you could see the Lieutenant Governor take over for you long term? I mean, is there a threshold you feel like, you know, any certain type of reason why this is the point where I would want you to take over uh, for a long period of time? I mean, if I died, <laughs> I would say he probably is going to take over. Um, I mean, I, it's hard to foresee unless I'm completely incapacitated and, uh, you know, uh, unconscious and unable to make decisions, then I'm sure that that would, that would take place. But I, I, don't, I don't foresee that happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.